Hi, I'm Isabella. Today, I'm going to test the pH of my raised beds. Correct pH is essential for healthy plants, so it's important that I test the pH before planting out my seeds and seedlings. I can then make adjustments if necessary. I've been researching this topic for a while now and found lots of conflicting information. My intention in this video is to give an overview of soil pH, highlighting and reporting key points and using information gathered from reputable sources. In the description below, you will find links to the sources I used and a more in-depth report in my blog. So, let's get started. Let's look at the equipment you'll need. pH is a measure of how acidic or alkaline a solution is. Pure water has a pH of 7 which is neutral, whereas vinegar with a pH below 7 is described as acidic. Baking soda on the other hand has a pH above 7 making it alkaline. So why is this important to a home gardener? Well, pH significantly affects the availability of plant nutrients in the soil. It's worth noting that a soil's pH and its other characteristics vary quite considerably from one region to another. Plants often have specific pH range requirements matching the region in which they evolved. This means there isn't one size fits all and you may be better off selecting plants to suit your soil conditions rather than trying to adjust your soil to suit too many different plants. Happily, most vegetables do well in a soil that is slightly acidic with pH 6.4 considered most favourable. Now onto my newly prepared raised beds. When it comes to taking your soil sample, an important consideration is consistency, both in terms of where and how the sample is taken. I like to take small samples from three different points in a raised bed down to 15 centimetres or so, and then combine these samples together before testing. Pick out any large debris from the samples, especially any plant matter or pebbles. There are lots of different pH test kits available. Whichever one you use, check the instructions carefully. Most electronic pH testers, like the one I use, need to be calibrated before use. In an appropriate container, I add 5 parts distilled water to 1 part soil sample and shake thoroughly for 5 seconds. Then, I wait 30 minutes or so for the contents to completely settle. After a quick swirl, the pH meter goes into the sample. The pH of the soil in my raised beds is fine, nearly neutral at pH 6.78. This is pretty much as I had expected since I measured the pH of the bed's component materials beforehand. My beds contain mostly homemade compost that is rich in organic material and buffers against pH changes. With good enough compost and a little perseverance, even the worst soils with unfavourable pH levels can eventually be improved. Organic material makes nutrients more readily available to plants and in this respect can help reduce the impact of a slightly unfavourable pH. I'm not going to apply any amendments to attempt to lower the pH of this vegetable bed. Once my seedlings have been in the ground for a while and the weather warms up, the pH should drop naturally as microbe colonies develop around the roots. If the soil is too acidic, a simple way to increase its pH is to add lime, either garden lime or dolomite lime if the soil also has a magnesium deficiency. On the other hand, lowering soil pH is not so straightforward. Elemental sulphur is quite commonly used but can take many months to effect a change. Exactly how much of a particular amendment should be applied to achieve the desired pH depends on the pH and chemical properties of the amendment, the pH and texture of the target soil and its mineral and organic material content. Growing in containers or raised beds can therefore be very rewarding as soil content and properties can be more readily controlled within a contained space. Whether you select plants to match your soil type or you amend your soil to match the plants you've selected, soil pH is only one important factor among many that influence plant nutrient uptake, growth and development. So there you have it. 
Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more great content. You can find a printer friendly in depth version of this video via the link to my blog in the description below. I'd love to hear from you, so please post in the comment section. Until next time, take care.